So I'm going to start with a really short kind of presentation, um, which will go through some of the main things that I think are good to consider when you are posting on social media. First, I'm going to just talk about why scheduling is important and why you should definitely try and do it and get to grips with the tools that I'm going to share today to help you do it. Um, then I'm going to help you a little bit with what to schedule, so how to approach scheduling um, in ways that is time effective and will get you the best results for the mi most minimal amount of time because I appreciate with running food hubs and producing food, um, there's a lot of different things that you're, that you're juggling. And then I want to talk, show, introduce you to the Creator Studio, which we talked a little bit about last week. Um, and so I, for this session, I'm just going to walk you through the most basic kind of process of how it works, how to get used to it, and why you should be using it to schedule for your Instagram and, um, and, and Facebook. So start with why schedule. So the thing to consider here is scheduling is really important, mostly because it will help you save time. Um, it will help you be consistent in your posting. And it will also, it's also one of the best things that you can do to create content consistently because that shows your customers that you care about them. If you're posting regularly, it's an offering to your customers, which will first will help them to engage with you. Um, it will give you better visibility with your customers. It will help you reach new customers. And yeah, this kind of consistency of, of posting, it's this consistent offering to your customers that helps them to feel like you, you care about them. So the first thing I want to talk about is why consistency is, is so important. Um, it's really important to create a posting schedule and commit to it. And that's because consistency helps to increase the engagement from your customers, but it also helps to increase loyalty um, with your customers. And it also helps you to perform better with the social media algorithms. So I've talked about the social media algorithms and how they work in another session. So I'm going to keep the, talking about that quite light for this session, but I'm just going to say here that if you're posting consistently, this will help you get better reach on social media and it will also help you to get better engagement as well. So it's really important to commit to a schedule that you can keep up in the long term. The best kind of social media posting schedule is one that's consistent and yeah, that your customers will have this kind of constant regular um, kind of touch point with you. So when you're thinking about what you want to commit to for a schedule, think about what you can keep up in a sustainable way in the long term. If you're not going to be able to post every day, it's good to think about that at the start and not do, say, two weeks of posting every day and then post once a week. It's think at the start about something that you can commit to that works for you with the time that you have and doesn't give you burnout. And also, yeah, so it's just work with what time that you, you have available and just make sure that you're doing the same thing every week. And that's um, a way to make scheduling work in the best way for you in your, in your food enterprise. And it's good to create time-saving habits as well. And when it comes to your scheduling. So what I mean by this is you can start by batch. So scheduling is a good way of batch posting. So when you're creating all of your posts at one go, um, you're going to save time if you're doing your posting that way. And the reason why is because if you think about it, if you sit down to write one post, writing one post is actually quite hard because you sit down, you look at the blank post space, you, you have to open all of your, you have to open your social account, you have to think about what to post. And it probably takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get into that mode of posting. Whereas if you're scheduling more than one post in advance, by the time you've written your most difficult first post, you're already in that social media platform, you've just done it. So it's easier to remember what to do. It's, you've already got the things open that you need to post. And so it'll be a lot quicker to then schedule a second post and then a third post and then perhaps a fourth or a fifth post. So it's much better to sit down and perhaps do all of your posting in the space of one hour than it would be to do one post a day or one post every other day. So I really recommend here to batch post, sit down, schedule all of your posts in advance in the space of an hour. Um, and that's a really good way of being really time efficient with your posting. And um, the other thing that I'm gonna recommend here in order to save time is that if you're sharing posts on social media, and I'm gonna talk a bit more about that later. So if I'm talking about anything that you don't know about, just 
stop me and we'll go into a bit more detail, but also some of the things that we'll cover later in the session, we'll have a QA and a at the end where we could perhaps go into more detail of anything that didn't make sense. Um, but a, a good tip to save time is to start a bookmark on your web browser when you start to save pages that are relevant to your food hub. And what I mean by that are perhaps other businesses that you'd like to support. If you've got suppliers, save their, save their Facebook pages in a bookmark. Um, if there are other businesses that you would like to support from an ethical, for an ethical reason or organizations or enterprises, then save their pages. And this means that when you come to posting, you can go to this bookmark and have a nice long list um, of pages that you can go to either for inspiration about what you'd like to post, also just to share the post that they're posting, which is a way that you can post more regularly and will save you a bit of time for thinking about what to post. So it's like a go-to list that you can go to to get started. And this goes really well with batch posting because you can go to your list, bring up your list and go through your list and then schedule all your posts at once. Um, also, when you're posting, have a go-to list of hashtags. I'm gonna share this um, presentation after I'm finished. Um, and there's a link here that will take you to this sheet that has a really nice long list of different types of hashtags categorized by different categories as well as what hashtags are and how to use them. Um, if you've got any questions on, on that page, then feel free to contact me in the Facebook group. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, also, I wanna just mention here, check out Louise's social prompts, which she puts on in the Facebook group every Monday. They're always awesome. And it's a good, good start to get you in the habit of thinking about what to post, because every week Louise is sharing really awesome stuff there to get you started. And also, relevant hashtags or things that are happening. So um, next slide, I'm gonna talk about what to schedule. So here is a little bit more detail about what a weekly routine might look like. Because it's, if you can develop the habit of posting and being active on your social media in a really time efficient way, it's a really good thing to do. So if you develop a weekly routine, and it's something that you can do every week. Um, this will really help you to be posting consistently and to get the best possible effects from your social media. So essentially what we want to do is to get the most out of your social media that you can. And what I mean by the getting the most out of it is get the best result for your food enterprise that you can from your social media activity with the very precious and limited time that you have. So what I'm sharing here is actually a it's a sample weekly routine that you could use that's really effective that I've used with um, I've used with food enterprises before and it's been effective. And if this seems like a lot, and I'm going to explain each of these points in detail, don't worry because this is scalable to what is sustainable for you. Because the best posting routine is the one that is sustainable for you with the time that you have available. So I'm going to start with talking about Facebook. So this section is really just talking about what to schedule. And then I'm gonna go into how to actually schedule it straight away after. So this is my 421 um, posting schedule for Facebook. And this is a really nice um, and simple framework that you can use to get started with a Facebook routine. You, you could start doing this on a Monday morning, a lot, maybe half an hour um, or an hour to do this on a Monday and see how that works with your schedule. It doesn't have to be a Monday, it can be any other day, but sometimes it's nice on a Monday to have um, maybe a less kind of people facing start. So I've always liked doing this on a Monday morning. And it also fits in well with what Louise is posting in the Facebook group, because you could go to her post for inspiration. So what I mean here is on Facebook, Every week, it's important to post every day if you can. Um, but if you make four of your posts per week a shared post, this is a great way to minimize the amount of time that you are spending trying to create your own posts. So it's a good thing to do on Facebook to share other people's posts or other pages posts. And the reason why is because this helps the algorithm to see your page as being an active member of the Facebook community. So without going into too much detail about the algorithm in this session, essentially what that means is that Facebook will show more of your followers, your posts, 
if the algorithm senses you as being an active member of the community. And you can do this by sharing other pages posts. So it's something that is fairly easy for you to do. You don't have to sit and angst about what to write in your post. You can just share something that someone else has written and bonus points if you write your own caption for something that someone else has posted. And I'll show you how to do this in a second. Um, what I mean by shared posts is you can share articles from other people's pages. Um, you can also share from external sources if you want to. So pages that you go to for news, but it's always good to try and share within Facebook if you can. And this is why I was saying before, create a bookmark where you're keeping a list of different pages that, that you go to regularly and they who share relevant content. So it could be someone that shares recipes. It could be, if you wanna go a little bit more kind of political in the issues that surround food and farming, it could be posts from the Land Workers Alliance. And it's up to you really to, to think about what is relevant for you and your food enterprise. And it could also be each other's posts as well. Um, it's great to create like almost like a, a social media squad and and be supportive of your other of other food enterprises. Um, so focus on positive and inspirational content or content which helps to increase knowledge and understanding of, as I was mentioning, the issues around food and farming. Um, and yeah, so if you're sharing four shared posts a week, you can see already that that will help to shrink the amount of time that you're creating your own original posts, but it's a way to stay active in Facebook. Um, so you're still posting regularly and you can schedule these in advance as well. So then as part of your posting every day on Facebook routine, then post two of your own original content posts per week. Per week. So for anyone who attended last week, we did a really great um, image editing class. And that was where I showed people how to create their own um, kind of branded or text images using Canva. Um, I'll share that as well when I share the slides um, for this session so you can have a look at how to do that. But your two original content posts could be something that you created yourself like this, or it could be a post where you describe um, your, your story as an enterprise. It could be where you're sharing your supplier stories, your own personal stories. It could be um, anything that's educating your, um, your followers about what you do as a food enterprise or perhaps your own take on some of the wider issues around food or farming. So essentially these posts are something that you've created yourself that help to, yeah, that help to share with your audience about your food enterprise, who you are and what you're doing and why. Um, bonus points if you're able to create original content posts that are either educational, entertaining, or um, I have brain fog today. What's my third? I say this all the time entertaining, educational, or emotional. And emotion, what I mean by emotional is like sharing your own stories or something that creates a human connection. So if you're following this routine, then you only have to create two of these a week, which is a nice way to approach it so you don't have to constantly be creating your own original content which can become quite yeah and unless you really love doing it um it can it can feel quite a lot to do if you're doing this seven times a week so and that means if you're using this routine you only have to write two of your own posts per week which can feel more manageable um and then one ask per post per week and what I mean by an ask post is that's the post that you use to help direct your followers to do an action that you want them to do. So what I mean by that is, do you want them to join your mailing list? Do you want to direct them to your shop front? So it's like, think about what's the most valuable action that you would like your Facebook followers to do and ask them to do that in that post. So that could also, this could also include your order cycle closing posts, that kind of thing as well. So it's something that you're posting that's directing your followers to do an action. Um, make sure you make it really explicit. Actually ask, um, ask within the post, you know, visit our shop front, um, order cycles closing, click here to visit our shop front, something like this. Just make it really clear and simple for the, for the audience to see what you want them to do with that post. And I always like to think when I'm scheduling posts at the beginning of the week, just thinking along the lines of give, give, ask. So your shared content posts are a give action because you're giving to other pages by sharing their content. And you're also giving to your followers by sharing something that you think they'll find interesting. And your two original content posts are a give post because you're giving 
posts which are interesting, entertaining, educational, emotional. So you're so it's something that you're offering to your to your audience. And your ask post is the ask post. So another way to look at this kind of format or this routine on Facebook, and it's, excuse me for the slightly cheesy plant growing um, metaphor, but it's if you imagine your shared posts um, that you're sharing as kind of soil building, like a soil building process. And then your two original content posts are like the plants growing. It's when you, it's you, it's the plant becoming more visible. It's your enterprise being visible. Um, so the soil is like the bedrock for the visibility of the plant. And then the ask post is the harvest. It's when you're harvesting the plant. So it's, but they all combine together. So if you're constantly putting out ask posts, it's like you're constantly harvesting without building up the soil and gaining the visibility of the plant being above the soil. So this might be a way that helps to kind of explain what I mean by this a bit better. I'm gonna move, if there's any questions at any point, feel free to unmute and, and ask me. I'm gonna move on to Instagram now. And so Instagram works quite differently to Facebook. Um, and what I, so scheduling for Instagram, you have to almost have a slightly different mindset when you're approaching it than to Facebook. So with Facebook, scheduling is all around um, posting every day, making sure you have like a consistent posting schedule, um, posting different types of posts and this plant analogy, which I've, I've just talked about. So it's a different approach to Instagram. Whereas when I say scheduling on Instagram, what I really mean is not only scheduling your posts, because you can get away with posting a lot less on Instagram. So on Instagram, you can get away with posting twice a week quite easily and get really good results. Um, on Instagram, really your, your like posts that you see are slightly more curated than on Facebook. Um, on Facebook, you can share posts to your feed and it's fine. Um, on Instagram, really you want to create two original, a minimum of two original posts per week. So when you actually post to your feed on Instagram, um, you want those posts to be original posts that you've created. Um, and it's, yeah, and the most important thing on Instagram, again, is also consistency. So two to three posts per week is a really good goal here. So another, what you have to think about on Instagram that you don't really have to think about so much on Facebook is it's, is it's it's important to also schedule engagement. And what I mean by engagement is if you can schedule some time on Instagram that you can interact with other accounts on Instagram. And so it's a different kind of scheduling here. Um, so the best way to get results from Instagram is to make sure that you schedule time every week to engage with your audience. It's a much more kind of interactive platform in that way than Facebook is. So engagement within the Instagram community helps to build your authority with the algorithm. And without going too much details about how the algorithm works, essentially it notices when you're an active member of the community. And when you post, it shows your post to more of your followers than it would do if you're not engaging. So it's, it's a bit more important on Instagram to put aside a little bit of time to do this activity. Could I interrupt one second? Yeah. Um, I have been, I have got them linked up together. So when I post on Instagram, it goes automatically onto Facebook. Are you as well? Are you saying this is not good? Um, I think if you're if if you're doing stories, it's really good. You want your story posts to post across Facebook and Instagram at the same time. And for anyone that doesn't know what stories are, they're short videos that you can post quite easily on Instagram, and you can link it up so that they can post across Facebook and Instagram at the same time. I've got a really useful how to do that, which I can share after the session as well. That will take you through how to do that step by step. In terms of posts, you can. I, I would, I personally wouldn't. I think sometimes if you're posting too often on, on Instagram, it can almost be a negative thing. Whereas on Facebook, you really want kind of daily consistency and you, it's a lot more kind of flexible with what you can post. And on Facebook, for example, you can post shared posts, which, you know, it's, it's like your engagement happens almost through your posting. Whereas on Instagram, you really want to curate your feed a little bit more. Um, people, the audience on Instagram kind of expects a slightly more kind of curated and 
attractive feed. And sometimes if you're just sharing exactly the same things as you are on Facebook, it might not have that kind of consistency in visual appeal. But I also believe that it's, it's also important to find out what works for you. And if you're finding that you're getting good results by this consistency on Instagram that you're only achieving because you're able to post on both at the same time, then that's great. And essentially, if you're just showing up for your audience and being present, um, that's a, an awesome start and is actually one of the best things that you can do. Consistency kind of trumps everything else. Um, so that's kind of a pers personal thing. For stories, definitely, yes, you want to share across both and you can have a high volume of stories and that's, that's a good thing. Um, with posting on Instagram, I would say that Instagram almost deserves like a bit more um if, if you can and you have the bandwidth to a little bit more of a kind of planned approach um because on instagram as well it's without like because it's like a beginner session instagram has a slightly different a, sli a slightly different kind of i find this word cheesy but a bit of a different vibe um i've done an instagram masterclass which goes into a lot more kind of detail on on what really works on instagram which again i can share after the session and um, maybe we can go into this as a group um, in, in the Q&A. But I, on Instagram, I would say that two posts, if you can post every day, great, but two posts a week is, is good. Sometimes it's good to kind of slightly have a different approach to Facebook and Instagram. Um, I mean, the most important thing to get good results with your posting on Instagram is this engagement thing that I'm talking about. So say if you are posting, if, if you're posting so if, if every post you posted on Facebook, you're posting on Instagram, if that's seven posts a week, great. But could you then also schedule some time to sit down on Instagram and for everyone that's commented on those posts, send them a reply. Or if someone has um, liked your post before you post, go onto their profile and like a few of their photos. Like This kind of um, approach on Instagram that works really well um, as opposed to just kind of being this kind of broadcasting space so if you're constantly posting and not engaging that can almost work work against you on instagram um so yes yeah, so there is really no one not re that there isn't really one right answer and the best approach is something that works for you that you're able to kind of maintain consistently and also to consistently show up for the people who are following you on, on the platforms and essentially from that point you can constantly kind of tweak and improve what you're doing I feel like it's a very meandering response to your question. I hope that's okay. Um, and so on Instagram, is there something else I wanted to say here? Hmm. Yes, let me just think. It was, yeah, stories. I think with Instagram, another thing like stories are a lot more important on Instagram than they are on Facebook. On Inst does it, does it, if anyone doesn't know what stories are, um, maybe this is something I can show you at, at the end of the session, but stories are essentially short videos that you can share on, on Instagram that only last 24 hours, that quite a kind of quick way to interact with your audience that aren't permanent and people don't expect them to be. This is really where done is better than perfect um, comes into its own, but it's, and also when you're sharing stories, you can share, if you're posting on Instagram, you can share your Instagram posts to your stories. So stories are a way to kind of keep your presence on Instagram, but they don't take as much, they don't need as much thought as a post. Um, and also that the annoying thing about stories is that you cannot schedule them in advance. You have to actually post them as and when they're posted they're not something that you can schedule um, but what you can do is you could plan your story when you're doing your post for the week say on a Monday if that was the day that you chose on a Monday you can plan what stories you want to post for the week into Instagram and across onto Facebook and you could for example every time you post on Instagram you could make sure that in your plan you're sharing those posts into your stories and that is instantly giving you some more stories coverage you can also share other people this is where on Instagram again you can be a little bit more kind of interactive in the community you can share other people's posts as well 
So this means that if you're seeing amazing posts on, like if you've seen some great posts on Instagram that you want to share, that communicate a message that you want to kind of associate with your food hub, you can then share that post um, onto your stories. So it's a little bit of a different approach to Facebook sharing onto your feed. It's sharing into your stories only last 24 hours, but it has the same effects of bonus points with the algorithm. And it's a really good thing that you can incorporate into your routine for the week that will give you better results with what you're doing on Instagram. In fact, if you're posting on stories regularly, it will give you much better reach for when you do post your posts. So I hope that's clear. I feel like I've just kind of thrown quite a lot of things into one space so I hope that's all right um some of this will be a bit more clear when I actually just go into like how to schedule with the the, the Facebook create studio and I'll probably come on some of these points back to some of these points in a bit more detail there okay so for my next section how to schedule and this is when we're going to go into Facebook creator studio so is anybody using Facebook creator studio already okay awesome so this is like a very beginner's kind of walkthrough. So I'm gonna introduce you to it. So the first thing to say is this is what it looks like. And you all, if you have a Facebook page, you will already have, you. there's nothing you need to do to create a, a login or anything like that. You already have access to create a studio. It's just something that Facebook automatically gives you if you have a, a Facebook page. You just have to go to, this link, which I've shared um, in the slides, or you can just Google create Facebook Create Studio and it will take you there. And this is what the beginning page will look like for you as well. So I've set this, I, I've already got this set up with a number of different Facebook pages. And I've also linked some Instagram accounts to my Facebook pages as well. So this is something that you, you might have done already. Um, Sarah, if you were saying that you were sharing posts across Instagram and Facebook, that means that your Instagram and Facebook are already connected, which is great. This is all picked up by Creator Studio. So there's a lot of things that are different depending on what you're already doing, but are very easy to walk through. So I'm going to start from a point of you already have your Facebook page um, connected to your Instagram account. If you don't, then I'm also gonna share um, afterwards in the group how to connect your Instagram account to your Facebook. And then it's really easy to set up on here. So, and I'll share steps how to do that. Um, they've made it really intuitive and easy to use. So I know it's always a bit tricky when you're getting used to a new way of doing something, um, but it's actually really, it's a lot easier than other scheduling tools to just get started here. Also, I really recommend using the Facebook Create Studio more than other scheduling tools. The reason why is that if you're keeping what you're doing in Facebook, it's um, a way of just getting more and more used to the platform. And it just starts taking away that any kind of technical barriers that you have to posting more if you just get more and more used to being in this space. So there are other scheduling tools, but I'm not going to cover them, cover them in this session because I really recommend using the Facebook um, Create Studio for all of your post scheduling. So this is what it looks like. You have access to both Facebook and Instagram from within the Create Studio, which is really useful because this means that you can change between your Facebook account and your Instagram account easily. So you can do all of your posting from here. So this means, hopefully this means things are a lot easier for you here than, than, yeah, than if you're doing it between accounts. This could just be one place that you go to to do all of your posting, all of your scheduling. And the one thing I want to note here is that you can't post stories yet in here. So stories are something that you're still going to have to do um, on, your, on your phone. Um, but everything else can be posted with, from within here. So I'm going to start with Facebook and I'm going to show you. So again, um, Patrick, my partner, doesn't seem to mind me using his account as a guinea pig for these sessions. So um, this is my partner's account, Upcycle Mushrooms. So I'm going to start here. So we're on, so if you want to go between Facebook and Instagram, you just click these two icons at the top of the page. If at any point you get stuck or lost, click on this button and it will take you back to this home page. 
So there's no way, so if you're not sure what you've done or where you are, click here and it always takes you back to this page between this and this for Facebook and Instagram. So we're on the Facebook side of things now. And up here is where you'll see a drop down of the pages that you manage. So if for some of you, you might manage more than one page, if you do manage more than one page, you'll see them all here. And these pages are all associated with your own personal Facebook account. Because in Facebook, you have your own personal account and you're made either an admin or an editor or other things of the pages that you want to manage. So you'll see a list here. So I'm going to work with Pat's um, for this session. So you can click more than one if you want to see all of your pages together. But it's also, I find easier and less confusing if you do one at a time. So if we look, so from here is where you choose the page that you're working on. So you're already given some options here of different things you can do. So you can post something by clicking here. You can look through all of your recent posts. So when you go to this, this is going to be already all set up for you. So there's nothing you need to do to, to get here. It will already be populated with all of your recent posts for your, for your page. So here is like a summary of everything you've posted recently. So, and this can take you to the content library, which is also here. So I'm gonna explain what that is next. So if, so the next thing I wanna show you here is the content library. If you click on the drop down on the left, it gives you a list of everything that you have posted. So there's posts, stories, videos, so I'm not gonna go through all of these today because I think all you really know to get started is posts and stories. Um, so for now, I'd ignore um, the rest of these. I might, if we have time, talk about playlists, but I think we're running slightly behind, so I won't today, but we could go into a more detailed session another time. So I'm, for today, I'm gonna look at stories. So on this list, you can then see all of the stories that you've published. You can then also, so you can look at all posts, this is everything all together. You can click on all published. What that means is all of the posts that you've already posted. And this is what we're talking about most today and that's the scheduled section. So you can click on this and it will show you all of the posts that you've got scheduled upcoming for the future. So if you've not been scheduling your post, this is probably empty. Um, so we're gonna start from here. So to start scheduling posts, you can do it from your homepage. So I'm just going to go back to create studio just because I think it's easier to just as you're getting used to something to just do it from the same place. And you can click here to create a post. You can also click here, but let's keep to one thing. So click here, create post. You can choose different things from here if you depending on what you want to do. I'm keeping it simple today. So we're going to create a post. So click on that and that will hopefully not take too long to load. And what should pop up is something similar to what you're used to seeing on Facebook. Also, this is quite useful. The first time that you use it, Facebook has designed this to give you almost like a guide as you're walking through it. So you'll get these little notes that pop up that help you um, on your way. So it's actually really easy to use. And it, the mo main thing I advise is just get started using it as soon as you can. Um, and these little guides can help you. So you just write your post like you normally would. Um, you can add a photo in the same way that you normally would. So say, I'm just gonna put hello. Um, I'm not even gonna share add a photo this time um, because I'm just gonna schedule it so I can delete it afterwards because otherwise Pat's audience are gonna be like, hi Pat. <laughs> um, and here at the bottom, you can see the option to publish. What do you wanna do here is you click on the arrow the drop down arrow in the corner here. And if you click on that, you'll get three options and you can save it as a draft. So you can save it and then work on it later. And I'll show you how to find your draft. So if you wanna start a post, you've written a bit, you're not sure you wanna to go to something else and you, or you don't wanna lose it, you can save it as a draft. And it means it's not published, it's not scheduled. It's just there for you to work on later. You can schedule it. You can backdate it as well. I'm not gonna talk about backdating. I don't think it's um, something we need to cover today, but I will talk about scheduling. So that's the topic of this session. So you click on scheduling and you'll get this to pop up. And this gives you the option of when you want this post to go live. So I'm gonna pick, for example, an hour, and I really hope I remember to delete this afterwards. 
So you can change the time here, you can change the date, so you can post this into the future. So you can sit down and you could do 10 posts in a day and post them on different, you can schedule them for the one day after the other. So you can sit, yeah, so it's a really good way of just sitting down and just getting all of your posts done in one go. As I've mentioned before, the first post is always the hardest. So if you sit down and you do three in a row, four in a wet row, you really will save time. I've worked with teams who have saved hours um, from their posting by changing their posting habits to posting everything scheduling everything all at once within an hour on a Monday morning. Um, so pick your time, then you simply just click here, schedule, done. So now I'm gonna show you how to find this so that you can see what you've done. So if we go back to content library and posts, so just check we're on the right page. So content library, then posts, and here you'll see my brand new post, which is a very boring post, it doesn't have a video or anything, so it's not entertaining, educational or emotional, but, um, and you can see your post here. It tells you that it's scheduled, so it hasn't been posted yet, and it tells you when it's going out. So it's going out today at 7.39. And you can also click on this to, um, to reschedule, you can change it, you can edit it. So these three dots, means like you can change anything about this post and so you've got time before it goes out to amend anything you want to amend change the time if you want to so it's constantly editable here and you can also filter um, if you're scheduling a lot of posts there's a handy filter here so you can look at the different type of things that you've posted also post types and you can choose if you're posting videos or photos or just links and that just helps to kind of navigate this. So that's really simply how to schedule posts in Facebook. So just while we're in um, the Create Studio, I just wanna show you one more thing, which is really useful. So if you scroll down on the left-hand menu from Content Library, there's a button here called Insights. If you click on that, it tells you information about how your, your video content and your stories are performing. So this is useful to look at how your story is performing on Facebook and also how any video posts that you post are doing. Um, and I'm gonna do another session all about insights that will go onto what all of this means and how to use this to improve what you're doing with your posting. So essentially, if you can see how your posts are doing, you can constantly improve what your, what, what your posts are. You can also, if I go back to content library or even to home, you can click on your posts to see more um, of how they're doing. So I'm gonna pick a post that's done quite well and I'm gonna pick this one. And if you click on that, you can see the post along with a lot of other really useful details. And these are posts that you've posted. So this is a way when you can look at things that you've posted before and see how they've done, see how your customers have responded to it and see if you'd like to post more content like this. So this was a really nice story post um, that we did, which was all about how Pat started with his mushroom kits. And he did start his grow kits, first of all, with like recycled milk cartons. They're much better now. Um, and um, so this was like a really nice kind of story post of how he started things that he was doing with his, his grow kits. And it got, for, for, it got really good um, kind of engagement for him. It got quite a lot of comments and shares and people reacted to it, which was really nice. Um, and you can see here exactly what's happened. So how many likes, comments, post clicks, and different things that people have reacted. So in this, that what this means is that 300 people saw this post. And when I mentioned the algorithm earlier, that your kind of bonus points with the algorithm affects this number, which is how many people see your posts. Um, so anything that you can do to improve your performance with the algorithm, just means more people see what you're posting, which will give you more return from your time investment in making these posts. So there's a few things to get started. If you just get started with looking at those things that I've showed you already, you will find it a lot, e you'll find it quite easy to get started with, with this program. And also, as I mentioned, it kind of holds your hand as you're going through it. There's also Instagram, which I'm going to show you quickly here. So at the very top of the screen, again, two separate sections here. So you've got Facebook and Instagram. So once you've connected your Facebook account to your Instagram account, to your Facebook account, and again, if you don't know how to do that, I'll share that after, um, then you will see your Instagram account here. Um, you can 
I'm only working with this account at the moment um, because I've actually not been using this to schedule Instagram. I was using something else, but I am going to start using this to schedule an Instagram. Um, and you can choose what page you're managing here. So for this, we'll look at Open Food Network. And then if you're looking on this list, again, you'll see everything that's been posted on Instagram. The exact same things apply. If you click on this list and something that you've posted, you'll see how it's performed. People liked it, the interactions, um, and lots of other really useful information. How many people saw it? This is impacted by what I was talking about earlier, which is about your engagement within the community on, on, on Instagram. So if you're liking other people's posts, if you're following other people and talking to them, you get better reach. Um, also, if you're posting regularly, and posting stories helps with this too. So this is just a, something to get started with on Instagram. And here, so here is content library posts. So you're seeing everything here. You've got the same thing with insights. So you can look at how you've been doing it. As you're kind of looking through this, um, keep a note of things that don't make sense when you might like some more explanation on because I'm gonna do an insight session. Um, and I think, yeah, it would be really useful if, if you attend that session, if you come with things that you haven't understood um, or that you'd like to know more about. But essentially, insights are a really useful way to improve what you're doing on social media. And here on Instagram, it's really simple to use. It's the same as on Facebook. Click on create post. And having slightly technical issues today with my... Uh, internet again. Okay, I'm going to reload this page. Cool. So if I click here to create post, we should get a pop up. It was, there we go. And this helps you choose where you're going to post. Instagram TV, if we'll ignore that for now, that's where you can post videos um, that aren't stories. So longer form videos, but we're gonna click Instagram feed. And what the Instagram feed is, is that's your grid on Instagram where you see your, your images and your posts. So if we click on that, then you get this pop-up and you can fill out all the details as if you're posting on Instagram, write your caption, add your photos, um, and you can add multiple photos. There's some advanced settings as well have a kind of route around this and you can do exactly the same thing here with scheduling and it looks identical as when you did it on Facebook. So I'm gonna put hello. It might not let me do it without an image, um, but I'm thinking about the time. So the format is exactly the same as what we did on Facebook. Click on the arrow, you'll get the option to schedule the post. So you can schedule all of your Instagram posts here. Um, and then on the content library, you can then see what you have here. So I'm going to leave this for now and go back to the group. And I think it's time for some questions because I've slightly overrun this session. Um, Sarah said, thank you, she's left. Um, her, in her laptop died and she's had to pull out the champagne because of her daughter getting married. But she said, thank you very much. And it's been an eye opener, the session. So I just really thought I'd mention that. Thanks, Louise. I'm really impressed that she made it when she's, um, yeah, I, like I'm, 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 I'm quite, I feel very, what's the word? Like just, yeah, uh, that's really awesome that, that she made it to the session. I hope she enjoys her champagne. So. <laughs> Um, I feel like I kind of rattled through a lot of things there and I was trying to kind of squeeze quite a lot of things that I've talked about in more detail in other sessions into kind of shorter um, spaces. So does that, does, has that been... Can I just ask, um, we, we separate, there's two of us that are doing the social media and I, I actually don't use Facebook. So although I can share my Instagram things to our Facebook page, we've got it all linked. Um, if I want to create my posts in Instagram only, not through that Facebook, um, you know, create page, mm -hmm. presumably that drop down menu is still there in the same way doing it directly through Instagram. Yeah, actually, I haven't I haven't tried that. And I think there might be an issue because um, if you're I'm just, so if you are your 
your Instagram account will be connected to your yeah. Facebook account. But that means that when you're posting on Instagram, that's posting on your page, but not via your own personal Facebook profile, but potentially through someone else's who's connected um, to no, I, I link it, our Taunton Country Market Instagram is linked to Taunton Country Market Facebook, yeah. but I'm not one of the um, administrators on that account. So you should I still it shows up, you know. I think if you're, um, are you an editor or do you have any kind of affiliation with the page? Um, with the Facebook page? Yeah, because you not, might- Not currently, but I suppose I could. Okay, hey, you you might you might find issues with scheduling um, posts on on Facebook if you're not an admin of the. No, I don't. I don't want. To, um, I have somebody else that does all the Facebook okay. posts right. and does all the schedules. I just do Instagram. Yeah, so I think then it should it should be fine just with Instagram. But if you have any problems, um, and if you're just doing it for Instagram, yeah, I, I would say if you're not, I would. I don't know how. I don't. I, I don't, I would, I would then say that maybe the Facebook um, creative studio might not be the best tool for you. And I'd probably use, I'd probably use something like um, Annalie or Later. Sorry, I didn't catch that. There's a couple of other different scheduling tools that if I was just doing Instagram on its own, I might yeah. use instead of, um, instead of the creative studio. And that's, it's called Later, yeah. L-A-T-E-R. Um, yeah. or, or there's also something called Planoly, P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. Both of them are free to use just if it's one user and one account. Um, so that might be something that you'd like to get set up for Instagram. It's Again, it's really intuitive and they have, um, when you first make an account, particularly on later, they've got this really sorted, um, where when you make an account, they take you very clearly through, step by step through exactly what you need to do to use it. So I would be using something like that if you're just using Instagram. Um, Facebook Create Studio is great if you're combining your two accounts and it can it's a really powerful tool for just shrinking the amount of time that you need to spend on, on both. Um, and also you've got this really cool tool where you can actually respond in Facebook Create Studio, you can actually respond to messages and all sorts of things in there. So it becomes this really great central touch point from which you can do all of these activities. So it's quite powerful and simple. Um, and really if I got myself added to that administrator list, um, I just don't want to get in the way of what, what she's doing on Facebook. You know, we do coordinate about when we're posting and if we're sharing posts and stuff like that. But um, yeah, okay. You can have, um, also with Facebook, if, um, you can have multiple admins and yeah, yeah. it wouldn't, as long as, if she's kind of doing the posting on Facebook, and you're doing the posting on Instagram, then it shouldn't be that you would cross over, but then it's also quite useful to be an admin because it might mean that, you know, you can see then what she's scheduled, like showing on Facebook easily. Oh, yeah. And then you could, if she's scheduling things in advance on Facebook, then you could then maybe use some of that to help inspire you with what you're doing on Instagram, which can then help to have like a bit more join up between the two accounts. Well, it, yeah, that's going to be a lot more fluid than us emailing each other or texting yeah. saying, you know, Yes, so that's great. Thank you. No problem. And I think it's a good way to kind of see everything that's going on. And also, you can look at what's happened on Facebook, and what she's posted and what's been effective. And that might then help you think, you know, if you see some posts that she's done on Facebook that have been amazingly effective, that might be a really good starting point for some good posts on Instagram as well. So it's quite yeah. a nice kind of, it's likely that you'll have a similar audience across both. So what works on your, for your Facebook audience might very well work for your Instagram audience, but yeah i hope that i hope that helps yeah thank you that's a big help does anyone else have any questions I just um, I just say one, thing. Oh. one thing i've been doing is um sharing across community pages because we've got quite a lot of local community pages and i, I bang it onto as many of those as i possibly can and that's worked very well because it, it the reach is much bigger than just waiting people to find your page yeah do you mean posting, um, do you mean crossover posts? So you're posting simultaneously on lots of pages that you admin, or do you mean um, um, kind of posting in lots of groups? I, I share across, I, I share to other groups. Awesome. That's a really effective um, thing to do. And part of this is that kind of like being active in the community, the Facebook community. And so that's a really, that's a really 
awesome share for the for the space because it's a really good way to also reach new customers as well. Um, so that's a really yeah, it's a really useful tip. Thank you. Can I just ask, is there a limit on the amount you can put on an Instagram post? They've made it a lot longer. It used to be that the caption was quite short um, and they've actually made it longer. And recent kind of studies are showing that the longer captions are actually getting better results. And I think it's because Instagram community are a bit tired of those kind of posts where it's just like, um, like you know, hashtag Monday morning and an image. They, they want something a little bit more um, to engage with. So actually longer captions are doing quite well. And it's also, there's, um, something else that the algorithm measures is the amount of time that someone spends on a post in Instagram. So the longer the caption, the more time, hopefully, the more time your, your audience will spend looking at that post. So it means that then you get better kind of algorithm bonus points. So the other thing with that is if you're sharing more than one image, um, like three or four or five images, or you know when you have those kind of lovely scrolling images where you can see lots of, Kate, you do this really well. Um, and that actually is really effective at increasing the amount of time that people spend on your posts, which therefore increases your um, performance with the algorithm, which means that more people see your posts. Um, so yeah, again, a long answer to a, to, a, to a question, but the captions are a lot longer than they used to be. I think the limit is enough to fit like a mini blog post in there now. Did you say Kate has got an Instagram account? Yeah, Ken, Ken Food Hubs Folkstone. Um, Sorry. Kent, Kent, Kent Food Hubs Folkestone. So um, it's 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 largely set up on the back of um, Kaylee's advice. So I was already doing it, um, but it's it's really uh, the, the more I write now, the more I've, it, I've just actually downloaded the app while you were talking, Kaylee. So I've been kind of like I've scheduled a post for later while I've been in the session. But it's really interesting to see how many people have um, watched the videos and actually you know have watched them in their entirety. And since I've been doing the, the daily engagement, just 20 minutes, even if I'm not posting, just commenting and liking things, I'm noticing that for about probably about six or seven weeks now, almost, I'd say at least three quarters of, of our new followers are local people and local businesses. Yeah. Um, and we seem to really be hitting people. So when, when our customers come to actually collect from us, um, opposed to me wearing a t-shirt the other day and some of them new customers never seen them before we had four or five new customers saying you know oh you're the lady with a t-shirt from instagram or from facebook so it's actually it, it's it's getting there and it was like it's working so it's it, it really does it does make so much so much difference and i was always a little bit wary about writing too much but i've just seen while we've been doing this like looking at my insights people are taking you know like that they're reading them um, and, and having a look. So it's, yeah, it's really working. Thank you, Kayleigh. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. And I, um, yeah, Kate's Instagram feed, if, if anyone wants like an example of, of a food enterprise that's doing it really well, um, Kate, your, your Instagram's always brilliant. And Thank I'm, you. Happy, so I'm really, yeah, really impressed with it. It's so, so I also really enjoy your posts. So I'm always like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'd edit them down I have a habit of talking too much and typing too much so yeah <laughs> is there a way you can link Instagram to well, not link it but can you share your post on Instagram to Facebook rather than link the two do you mean just sharing so once you can post it on Instagram to Facebook it would need to be manual you could kind of copy you could do it like manually in the um, in the Facebook Create Studio, maybe open, like, just copy the the text and then paste right. it into the post and the image, so that that doesn't re that's not really possible yet. But you can share your Instagram post into your stories in Instagram, which could then go across into your Facebook stories. Okay. So if you're yeah, if you're, if you're sharing, so I was going to show you. I, I did show how to do this in another session. If, is everyone okay with how to share a post into their stories on Instagram? Uh, no, I'd be happy if you just went through it really quickly. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to quickly show you here. I hope that it's the same on desktop as in, oh, I'm going to Facebook, as it is in on the mobile. So if 
if not, I might do a session that's all like where you can actually share a mobile screen. I just don't have my phone set up to do it. In which case I might go more into the kind of like the how to's on to do this on your mobile phone on, on Instagram. So I think stories are mostly um, only on the mobile phone. So, okay. So it's like, if you see someone's post on your phone, so I'm going to explain it on here, even though it's not, but you can see, and you see these little like kind of what look like kind of paper airplanes. And if you click on that, you can actually from, once you click on there, it might, my, my internet's being a bit iffy, but you can share this to your stories. It doesn't give you the option on the desktop, but when you're on your phone, if you click on the little kind of paper arrow, when the box pops up, there's an actual, there's an off, there's an option for you to then share to your stories and it will sh instantly share that post to your stories. So it's not an exact showing, but it's, it, it, I think you'll have an idea when you go onto your phone, how to do it. But yeah, so you look for this, click on that. And then you will have an option on the pop-up box of sharing to your stories. Okay. Okay. And then if you've got your Facebook and Instagram connected, then you can then make sure that story, story shares onto your Facebook as well. Um, and I mean, there is a way to share your posts onto Facebook, but I haven't tried it in the Creator Studio yet. Okay. Um, can you stop your Facebook posts being shared in Instagram then? Yeah, so that will be then in, in the settings. Um, again, let me... again, you'd want to share perhaps the occasional one, but not, I mean, at the moment I've been posting every day on one of the um, Christmas market sites yeah. and I've scheduled them all, but can I schedule them so that say maybe one goes to Instagram, but not all of them? Yeah, um, so you could change the settings um, in your Facebook account. I could I could take you to Facebook and show you how to do that, but the other thing you could do for now, because we've just gone through the details of the Create Studios, you could, if you've scheduled them in advance, mm -hmm. you could then go into Instagram and then remove those scheduled posts, I imagine. But I'm not sure how to, if you've got it set up to automatically share, um, let's see if we can see on Facebook, because I don't have it set up on Facebook to do that. So. Personally, but I think if you went to your the page when you've got the connection, so see if I went to um yeah, if I went to the Open Food Network. A good place to start to look to do that would be if I click on the page. So if you go to the page that you manage, and on this drop-down list on the left, I'd imagine here would be in the settings, there might be something here that would help you. It's about posts and story sharing. So maybe it's here. Hmm. No, let me, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to walk through that, find out how to do it. And then I'm gonna share a little mini how-to video on our, on our Facebook group. Cause you know, sometimes like, yeah, I, I think once I've kind of fiddled with it, I'll find, find out how to do it. So what you wanna do is, it's automatically sharing from Facebook to Instagram and you want to stop that. Yeah. It's not doing anything at the moment because I haven't linked it. I've just opened up an Instagram account. But what I was trying to, well, from what you said earlier, you don't want to have like a post every day hmm. from Facebook onto Instagram. So that's oh. what I was trying to work out. Okay, so that doesn't, that, that won't happen automatically. If you post on Facebook, it just happens on Facebook. So no, it won't at the moment, unless I link it, but then if I link it, it will, won't it? No, if you, if you link it, it still won't. Sorry, I was a bit confused by that. If you link the two accounts, it still won't. Um, okay. What it will do is it means that you'll have both accounts in your creator studio to work on. So mm -hmm. it, by just linking them, it doesn't do anything automatically, even with um, per, like stories post sharing. It's something that you have to kind of, actually go into the settings and turn on um, the, that you want it to share stories across both. So That's it's like an extra added thing you can do. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I was, I was like, oh no, why is that happening? <laughs> um, I think oh. I, I share, even though I don't do Facebook, I do share one Instagram a week to Facebook, just turn the toggle on for that, you know, that particular post and that works really well. I've got no idea what it looks like on Facebook, but. Sure, it's fine. Yeah, 
I think that's something is again as a preference if you want to kind of turn on automatic posting. Um, I the way I work, I quite like to keep them separate because I quite like to do different things on on the different platforms. But again, if you're really time poor, it's a really effective thing to do. Um, so I think that's. I, I was I was advised that um, like you know you might have the hashtags on Instagram, but Facebook don't like them so much. So I put mm -hmm. a few on, share it to Facebook, then go back in and edit and whack a few more into Instagram. So I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea what that's that does. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I've shared um, in the slides a link to a page which covers everything you need to know about hashtagging. But that's a really good point. On Facebook, more than one or two hashtags looks quite spammy. And if you're kind of automatically posting from Instagram to Facebook and you've got like a border of hashtags, it can look not, doesn't look quite right. Um, so one on two on Facebook, and then you'd want a few more on Instagram. But I think with Instagram, the magic number is around 11 and 11 or 12. Um, yeah. because again, any more and it starts to look a little bit spammy. Yeah. But like, like there's studies that show around 11 is like where you see the peak in um, reach. And then it doesn't really make so much difference after that. Um, yeah. But on, on the sheet as well, there's a nice long list of hashtags that you can choose from. And also, if you set up automatic sharing from Instagram to Facebook, that covers, um, yeah, that covers the, um, Sandra, that covers your original question of can you share from Instagram to Facebook if the post is already on Instagram? No, but then you could, if you, when you're posting it, you could, if your accounts are linked, you can then share it across both. So, mm. um, yeah, so I hope the Instagram sheet's useful. There's a nice long list of um, hashtags you can use there. And also Louise's we've got this really, every Monday is posting in the, the Facebook um, Thriving Food Hubs group with relevant, like, relevant hashtags that she's found that week and lots of other awesome kind of posting kind of prompts, which, which I've been personally loving, so. Really good. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I feel, I'm sorry everyone that we've overrun a little bit today. So if there's no more questions, I'm gonna yeah, uh, wrap up the session and probably we'll be sending a poll in the next couple of weeks for something else marketing. Um, next week we're running a session, which is a, a session I'm really excited about. And it's gonna be all about, uh, all about how some of our hubs are approaching the issues around um, food, people who are suffering food poverty. So how hubs are helping people who are in that situation. Which I think it's gonna be a really nice session. It's gonna be one of a few others on this topic. So what we're hoping to kind of cover all the awesome things that, that food enterprises are doing, um, as well as some of the kind of the wider issues around this. So that's gonna be a really nice session with some guest hubs. Um, that would, that. yeah, that would be brilliant. We'd, we've, yeah. we've already got like a pay it forward on ours and we're looking at how to kind of like bring that in and make sure that we're actually hitting everybody and we've got a local school who've got a food lab that it's called custom food lab in there and so we're, we're hoping to onboard some of their um veg boxes and then that helped provide revenue for them to give veg boxes to people that can't afford them so it's it's kind of yeah really looking forward to that one because we're a yes. bit like what at the moment yay so that yeah that would be really awesome if if yeah if you come it sounds like because like you spoke to me before about some of the things that you're doing and it's really uh, really exciting in there and it's also such a like vital topic and yeah so hopefully that will be yeah. a really really interesting session and then we'll have one which is more of a kind of like um hubs will be talking about some of some hubs will be talking about some of the things that they're doing and there'll be a q and at the end and then we'll follow up with our kind of key takeaways from that of different ways that um what we've kind of learned and how you know what can we share so that more of us can 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 do these things so yeah so i hope to see you there and i realize i've been losing my voice all afternoon today so <laughs> uh, thinking about the recording is probably gonna be a bit croaky but um i hope you all um take away something from the session and i'm on the facebook group if anyone has any more kind of specific questions or needs help with any of these points just just contact me um yeah, I'm, I'm always around so Brilliant. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Thank everyone. You. Have a lovely day. Good to see you all. Bye. 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 Bye.